Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Truth Report for this week. We're hearing a lot of teaching today concerning the end times, the coming of our Lord, and what are the events that would surround that, either precede it or follow it. <clears throat> I want to take a quick look at uh, a passage in 2 Thessalonians. The two Thessalonians letters are especially helpful in understanding the end times, especially 2 Thessalonians. And in chapter 2, <clears throat> we see this concerning the end times. Paul writes in chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians, concerning, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus and our being gathered together to him. So this is what it's concerning. This is what he's writing about. His coming and our being gathered together in him. We ask you, brothers, not to be easily unsettled and alarmed by some prophecy or report or letter supposed to have come from us saying that the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is the unprecedented exposure and uh, uh, release of the wrath of God upon the world, the day of the Lord. Saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Do not let anyone deceive you. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come. Namely, the coming of the Lord and our gathering together and the day of God's wrath. That's not going to come until... The rebellion or the apostasy. It's apostasia in the Greek. And that means the departure from the faith. These are, these are confessed believers who have departed from the faith. Atheist non-believers don't depart from the faith. They don't apostatize. <clears throat> that day will not come until the apostasy occurs and the man of lawlessness, the man of sin, uh, son of perdition, uh, the Antichrist, uh, until he is revealed, the man doomed to his destruction, he will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God and is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. <clears throat> so with regard to the end times, with regard to the coming of the Lord, are being gathered together in the two things that have to take place. There has to be an apostasy, a departure from an unprecedented departure from the faith, and the revelation, the manifestation, we'll see it, we'll know it, of, of the man of sin, the Antichrist. Now those are two basic ingredients to the end times. <clears throat> there is a missing ingredient. It's not really missing because the scriptures refer to it. And it's referred to in Matthew chapter 23. And this is a passage where <clears throat> uh, Jesus excoriates the uh, religious leaders of his day. Uh, woe to you, teachers of the law, you Pharisees, you hypocrites. Woe to you, blind guides. Woe to you, blind fools, you're blind men. Woe to you, teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you hypocrites. Uh, you snakes, you brood of vipers. How will you escape being condemned to hell? So he's got some pretty tough language with regard to the spiritual leaders the rabbis, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law of, the, of his day. And he concludes the passage in uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 39 of chapter 23, and he says this, You will not see me again. And this is the missing ingredient. You will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of, and in the English it's Lord, it's a quote from Psalm 118, verse 26, where it says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. Yahweh. Baruch haba b'shem Yahweh. And Jesus is saying to the religious leaders, you're going to have to confess that. You're going to have to acknowledge that I am the representation, that I represent <clears throat> Yahweh. Uh, and that's exactly what God wants. That he would be the earthly, the human manifestation of Yahweh himself, and the religious leaders will have to acknowledge that. Now, we're a long way from That's a basic ingredient, uh, a missing ingredient, I would say. We're a long way from that because the rabbis have said, don't use the name of Yahweh. Uh, you could be, and it's too holy, it's, it's too reverent, we, uh, we, we cannot use it, we'd be in danger of of um, breaking the commandment, you shall uh, not use the name of the Lord your God in vain. He says don't misuse it, but he doesn't say don't use it. He says use it. And there is a day when, when even the religious leaders of Israel will acknowledge 
that uh, Jesus is Yahweh and he comes in the name of Yahweh. But it appears from the scriptures that the Gentiles are going to lead the charge in this. We get this from passages like Malachi chapter 1 and verse 11. My name, God says, Yahweh says, my name shall be great among the Gentiles from the rising to the setting of the sun. My name will be great among the Gentiles, says Yahweh Almighty. It appears that the Gentiles are going to lead in this ex exaltation and, and uh, lifting up and glorifying of the name of Yahweh. We don't hear it from the Gentiles in the pulpits today, even evangelicals, where we hear it is in uh, the music groups, the praise bands, the worship groups. Uh, you go to YouTube and you hit the link Yahweh and you'll see some of these great songs that have been created by non-Jews exalting the name of Yahweh. The day's coming, not only when Gentiles will, but Jews will, the, certainly the remnant will acknowledge Baruch haba b'shem Yahweh. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. And that's Jesus. And that's the truth. <laughs>